Welcome back friends. In this module, I am going to talk in detail about general anesthesia. General anesthesia, as I have already mentioned in my previous modules, consists of analgesia plus amnesia plus total loss of consciousness or unconsciousness. There are three types of general anesthesia or in the three ways this type of general anesthesia could be given. That is TIVA or total intravenous anesthesia, GA with spontaneous ventilation or spontaneous respiration and third type is GA with controlled respiration. So effectively GA consists of three types, TIVA that is total intravenous anesthesia, GA with spontaneous respiration or general anesthesia with spontaneous respiration and general anesthesia with controlled respiration. I am going to talk in detail about each one of them. TIVA, let's first talk about TIVA or total intravenous anesthesia. In this achievements of goals of GA that is analgesia plus amnesia plus loss of unconsciousness are achieved only with the use of intravenous agents. Following features are salient features of total intravenous anesthesia as you can see on your slide. It is useful for small surgical procedures. Spontaneous respiration of patient is maintained. Use of LAMA or laryngeal mask airway. It, is, it forms an important concept or important component of TIVA. Now how do you use LAMA? I will talk about it in detail. What are the uses of TIVA? It is useful for daycare procedures and ambulatory surgeries. And what are the advantages? There are no residual effects even after using combination of drugs and quick recovery. So effectively TIVA as I said before consists of achievement of GA that is achievement of all the goals of GA analgesia plus amnesia plus loss of, loss of consciousness with the help of using various intravenous agents. And as I told you features are it could be used in small surgical procedures and the main stay of using TY is spontaneous respiration of patient is maintained. Now how to use LAMA, LAMA which is very essential whenever you employ TIVA, LAMA or laryngeal mask air. There is a method how you use LAMA. LAMA is a is a equipment which has been specially designed so that patient could be administered TIVA. And what's the use of LAMA? It prevents tongue fall because whenever you, 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 whenever you give total intravenous anesthesia, patient is unconscious and there are high chances that tongue fall occurs. As a result, it obstructs respiration and saturation in turn may fall. To prevent this complication, LAMA is employed. Laryngeal mask airway with patient in supine position, anesthetist st standing at the head end of the patient. Laryngeal mask airway is inserted. It is just glided over the half, uh, heart palate so that it stays just at the level of epiglottis so that both tongue fall, the the main aim of LAMA that is to prevent the tongue fall is achieved and LAMA stays in that particular position. You can inflate the cuff which is present in the laryngeal mask airway with, with the air so that it stays in that particular position and you can fix the LAMA at that particular position. Effectively LAMA controls respiration provides a way for, uh, provides a way for the outlet of uh, expired air whenever patient is under total intravenous anesthesia. As I told me before, what are the uses of TVA? It is used for daycare procedures and ambulatory surgeries. And the main advantage is there are no residual effects and quick recovery. The other type of general anesthesia is general anesthesia with spontaneous respiration. In this form of anesthesia, all the essentials of general, general anesthesia are achieved. That is loss of consciousness, analgesia and amnesia, but patient is breathing spontaneously. Now, what is the difference between GA with spontaneous respiration and TIVA? The only difference between GA with spontaneous respiration and TIVA that is total intravenous anesthesia is in GA with spontaneous respiration, we can use various forms of agents like combination of agents which includes analgesic agents, inhalational agents, induction agents and maintenance. Whereas in TIVA, we can use only intravenous agents. Mapleson A circuit is used to maintain anesthesia whenever GA is given with spontaneous respiration. And what are the uses? Again, surgeries with short duration that can be maintained by this method. Advantage is once again quick recovery without any residual effects. Then the third and the major form of GA which has been employed for long procedures is called GA with controlled respiration. The difference of GA with controlled respiration with other forms of GA 
basically GA means general anesthesia is in this form of general anesthesia patient is not breathing spontaneously the respiration of patient is lies solely in the hands of anesthetist so anesthetist is the one who decides how many breaths patient is going to take in a minute or what will be the tidal volume of the patient this is major difference between GA with spontaneous respiration and GA with controlled respiration now how do you define it definition is quite simple it involves combinations of sedatives hypnotics antiemetics volatile anesthetics analgesic induction agents and muscle relaxant which are used in various proportions as per the patient's age weight stature surgical nature of surgical procedure that patient is going to undergo duration of surgery and systemic status of patient so even though this definition may found may be very cumbersome or very difficult to remember essentially you are supposed to remember only this general anesthesia with controlled respiration means it involves combination of agents using various agents like inhalational agents induction agents or maintenance agents used in various proportions as per the need of patient duration of surgery type of surgery age of the patient and systemic status of the patient so taking into account all these things you are supposed to induce the patient maintain the patient and reverse the patient in such a way that surgical procedure occurs smoothly without any untoward incident to achieve and the ultimate goal of general anesthesia is achieved by doing this that is to have complete analgesia amnesia and unconsciousness now again let us talk about general anesthesia i am going to talk about general anesthesia with controlled respiration in detail because total intravenous anesthesia and ga general anesthesia with spontaneous ventilation a part of general anesthesia with controlled ventilation comes under the same thing only thing only difference between this ga with controlled uh, respiration is patient's respiration is in the hands of anesthetist so now going to the preoperative evaluation just as i discussed in the previous module preoperative evaluation in, involves the following thing you can look at your screen it's like history and physical examination to determine whatever relevant tests and consultations are required for the patient guided by the patient choice and medical risk factor choose a plan of action for a particular patient get a informed written consent from the patient educate the patient about anesthesia pain management and perioperative care and reduce the patient care cost these are the basic goals of preoperative evaluation which have already been discussed with you now what are the things which you are going to look for in the preoperative evaluation in case of general anesthesia with controlled ventilation the major things which you are going to look for is anesthetic evaluation which i have already discussed before in other mo module which includes preoperative status including asa grading that is american american society of anesthesiologists grading asa grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 patients airway assessment which includes malapatti classification wilson's rule thyromental distance which has already been discussed previously dental examination use use of any prosthesis loose teeth dental caries dental infection spine examination examining the spine range of neck movement range of temporomandibular movement any evidence of kyphosis scoliosis or lordosis in the spine peripheral arterial examination looking for any presence of any varicose veins or any peripheral arterial disease or in the in patient any evidence of organomegaly like splenomegaly hepatomegaly or intra abdominal tumor also look look in for during anesthetic evaluation for some specific conditions like obesity protein energy malnutrition hiv status of the patient diabetes hypertension cardiac problems and any other associated problems so these are the things which you look in your preoperative evaluation and anesthetic evaluation once you do all this then again you define anesthesia as modern day general anesthesia it differs from your medieval period the difference is modern day general anesthesia consists of using combination of agents in varying proportions so as to achieve all the goals of ga now combination of agents these agents again as i said include lot of agents starting with pre medications inhalation inhalational agents induction agents maintenance maintenance agents and agents which are used to reverse the anesthesia now 
uh, after preoperative evaluation, what are the pre medications which patients are supposed to take? If a patient is suffering from diabetes or hypertension, patient is supposed to take all the medicines which has been prescribed by any other physician who is if a patient is on antihypertensive drugs or any beta blockers or statins, patient should continue taking those drugs as prescribed by the physician till the day of surgery without changing the course or dosage of those particular drugs because these drugs do not interfere with any of the anesthetic drugs or with the, any of the anesthetic procedures that take place during the general anesthesia. However, talking, however, some of the drugs like aspirin or anticoagulants or diabetic medications or Mao inhibitors, these drugs need to be stopped at least a day prior to surgery or if possible at least seven days prior to the surgery. Diabetic medications specifically should be stopped on the day of the surgery. The reason being on the day of surgery patient is going to be nil by mouth for at least six to eight hours. On top of that if a diabetic patient takes this and takes his anti-diabetic drugs severe hypoglycemia may ensue that may result in collapse of that particular patient. So it is important in case of specifically in case of diabetic patients that diabetic medicine medication has to be avoided or stopped a day prior to the surgery after doing all giving all these pre medications now comes the day of the surgery and what are the pre medications that patient has to take these are the pre what, what do you mean basically by pre medications pre medications are drugs which are used to used to be given to patients before the surgery or before induction of anesthesia so as to allay his fever, so as to allay his systemic complaints, so as to allay all other general status that patient fears or that patient feels and all the things that may interfere during the induction or maintenance of anesthesia. So what are the things or what are the pre-medications that you are supposed to give? First, vagolytics that is if a surgeon starts operating without giving vagolytics Sometimes, if at all patient touches any branch of vagus nerves, there will be sudden decrease in heart rate or vagal response as we call. Hence, to counter that, it is always advisable to give vagolytics during preoperative period. Now, vagolytics includes injection atropine or injection glycopyrrolate. Now, antacids like injection Rantac, Ranitidine or injection Pentaprozole, they should be given because patient is NBM and there are chances that there is a lot of acid secretion inside the stomach to counter that antacid should be given. Antiemetics, lot of anesthetic drugs can cause emesis or vomiting. Is there contraindication or is there complication? So to counter that antiemetic drugs like injection ondansetron or injection domperinone has to be given. Now analgesic drugs like injection Fortwin or injection or other opioids have to be given because they act as an adjuvant to induction agents. Then also you like to give some sedatives like IV diazepam or IV midazolam or injection phenargan. So combination of these drugs are given in various, various proportion as per the need of patient, as per the height, weight, stature of the patient and as per his systemic status to achieve proper medical care and proper pre-medication. Once you give all these pre-medication drugs like vagolytics, antacids, antiemetics, analgesics and sedatives, then patient is ready for induction of anesthesia. Now, what are the apparatus required for giving general anesthesia with spontaneous respiration, with controlled respiration? Following apparatus are required like Boyle's apparatus, Anesthesia circuits, this has been talked with you in detail, laryngoscopes with all types of blades, endotracheal tubes as have been talked in the other module. All anesthetic drugs should be kept ready and all emergency drugs should be kept ready. Now emergency drugs include atropine, ad adrenaline, soda bicarb, aminophylline, calcium gluconate potassium chloride, furosemide, dexamethasone, f and others. All anesthetic drugs including various anal analgesic agents, including various induction agents, including various inhalational agents should be made available. You should make a plan how you are going to induce this particular patient, what are the drugs you are going to maintain in a patient, maintain for, you are going to use 
to maintain the anesthesia and what are the drugs you are going to use to reverse the anesthesia. So effectively before induction plan of action should be ready in the mind of anesthetist. He should have following apparatus just as I mentioned anesthesia uh, boils apparatus, anesthesia circuits, laryngoscopes, endotracheal tubes of various sizes, all anesthetic drugs and all emergency drugs ready at hand. Now induction. How do we induce a patient? for controlled respiration, general anesthesia with controlled respiration. First, patient is lying on the su in supine position, anesthetist should always stand at the head and head end of the patient. Boils apparatus effectively should be placed in such a way that anesthetist should be able to see the boils apparatus from one corner of his eye. Also, monitors which are placed should be in placed in such a way that anesthetist, anesthetist while inducing the patient or while reversing the patient or even during the surgery can keep an eye on the monitors, all the necessary monitors which are available. Now how do you induce the patient? First patient is pre-oxygenated with 100% oxygen. This is done with the help of circuit or anesthesia circuits. Now normally in my routine practice I use Bain circuit because I use open circuits for uh, for giving anesthesia or general anesthesia. So Mapleson F or Mapleson E that is Bain circuit is used for induction of anesthesia. I, I first pre-oxygenate the patient with 100% oxygen then induce with appropriate inducing agents. Now there are three types of inducing agents which I have already talked and I have covered in pharmacology that is thiopentone, ketamine or propofol which has been routinely used. Now you have to decide plan of action in, in a, as per the need of the patient which type of induction agents you are, you are going to use. If you are going to use thiopentone, the dosage of thiopentone for induction is 5 mg per kg. If you are going to use ketamine, the induction dose is 2 mg per kg. And if you are going to use propofol, the induction agent is 2 mg per kg. The advantages and disadvantages of this, all the three drugs have already been covered in pharmacology. So depending on the need of the patient, type of patient and surgery, you choose any one of this particular drug to induce the patient. Once you induce the patient, the next step is going to be to, going to, be intubate, to intubate the patient. So to intubate the patient, first patient has to be paralyzed. That is patient has to be given muscle relaxant. And normally for intubation, depolarizing muscle relaxant is used. That is injection scolene 1 to 2 mg per kg is used. Once injection scolene 1 to 2 mg per kg is given, there it fall with continuously maintaining 100% oxygen. It follows with twitches which go right from head end to the toe. Once the twitches passes, patient is fully paralyzed and its muscles are totally relaxed. After that, you do direct laryngoscopy watch for the twitches, intubate the patients with appropriate size of endotracheal tube under direct laryngoscopic vision. The procedure of laryngoscopy and endotracheal intubation has already been covered in the equipment section. Now once the tube is passed, ventilate and check for the bilateral air entry. You can check for bilateral air entry with the help of stethoscope. Check for bilateral air entry, it should be equal and clear. Once air entry is equal and clear, you secure the endotracheal tube and fix the same. Fix it with Dynablast so that before fixing, please check the mark on the endotracheal tube which is present at the edge of the lip so that you know how much tube is present inside the mouth, how much length of tube is present inside the mouth. Fix the tube, secure the tube with the Dynablast and see to it that tube does not move. Ventilate again after fixing the tube. Check for the bilateral equal air entry. Once the effect of depolarizing muscle relaxant wears off, that it wins off say in around 2 to 3 minutes. And how do you know that effects of scolene or depolarizing muscle relaxant has weaned off? Patient will start breathing spontaneously again. When you see when you can see the chest movement or when you can feel that patient has started to breathe again, it is the time that you are supposed to give long acting or non depolarizing muscle relaxant. And there are three types of non depolarizing muscle relaxant which are normally used that is injection pancuronium, injection vicuronium or injection atracurium. 
Now, dosage of the same have been listed as you can see on your slide. Injection pancuronium, the dose is around 0 0.08 milligram per kg. Vacuronium, it's around 0 0.08 milligram per kg. And injection atracurium, 25 milligram. So, this is how you give the drugs, the non depolarizing drug, to maintain the anesthesia. This is how you are supposed to maintain the anesthesia. So now I have finished induction of anesthesia and I have finished maintenance of anesthesia. This will be followed by repeated doses of muscle relaxant. Whichever muscle relaxant you choose that is injection pancuronium, injection vacuronium or injection atracurium. You have to repeat the doses because the duration of action of injection pancuronium is around 30 to 35 minutes. Duration of action of injection vacuronium is around 15 to 20 minutes and duration of action of atracurium is around 20, 15 to 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, patient will again start breathing. And when you feel that patient has again started breathing, you have to extend. If the duration of surgery is more and you have to extend the duration of surgery, you have to repeat the doses of this muscle relaxant which have been given. And you can increase the doses as and when required till surgeon finishes his surgery. So, in addition to this muscle relaxant, what are the other things that you use for maintenance? So, to main, uh, in addition to this, you can always use oxygen plus nitrous action, nitrous oxide plus any other volatile agent of your choice and of the cho as per the need of the patient that is halothane or isoflurane or sevoflurane. So, effectively for maintenance, of anesthesia during res controlled respiration we use oxygen plus nitrous plus volatile anesthetics with the help of continuous incremental doses of non depolarizing muscle relaxants along with any analgesics and sedatives as per needed. So this is how you maintain the anesthesia. What are the intra various modes of intraoperative monitoring or various intraoperative monitoring devices required? They are pulse oximeter, ECG if available, capnography in cases of uh, laparoscopic surgeries, ABG machine if available, you have to continuously monitor the urine output, IV uh, input output charts, other emergency investigations and you have to also monitor time and duration of muscle relaxation. When you have, when you are giving continuously the muscle relaxation within increment doses, you are supposed to note down the time when you give these muscle relaxants so as to know the duration of action.
Thank <laughs> you. 